are flat earthers stupid? So this is my conversation with Simon Dan. We covered a variety of topics and I've broken our conversation into two parts. In this video, we discuss flat earth and his opinion of some well-known flat earthers, why he doesn't engage in debates, his thoughts on UFOs and UAPs, the possibility of life in the universe, and artificial intelligence. Part two of our conversation will be available two days after this one, so keep an eye out for that. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that like and subscribe button. I'm a new channel and really do appreciate every single like and new subscriber. Alternatively, if you think I should quit YouTube and delete my channel because I suck, let me know in the comments below. Also, big thanks to Simon Dan for spending the time to chat with me. If you're not already subscribed to his channel, the link will be in the description below. Definitely go check that out. Lastly, I also make content where I react and attempt to debunk various videos on things such as Illuminati conspiracies or that claim to be evidence of ghosts and demons. So check those out and let me know what you think. All right, that's it. Thanks. And now back to the conversation. What's up, everybody? I am back with another very special guest, Simon Dan. Dan, I really appreciate you doing this. Welcome to the show. My pleasure. Thanks very much. All right. I want to jump right in. Are flat earthers stupid? Um, I think some are stupid. Some know what they're doing. Some know uh, exactly what they're doing and they don't believe it. Some are stupid, harsh. I think uneducated is probably the, the best thing to say. Uh, but then... You know, you get these people who have conspiratorial mindsets, you know, your moon landing deniers and the, and the, and the sort like that. And when Flat Earth came along, it, it was sort of like the perfect conspiracy for them because it, it bought into things like the moon landing, which is obviously part of it as well. And it was like the perfect conspiracy for them to, to believe that was was real because they have that little thing that makes them think they know something that no one else does and it makes them feel good. And there's a little community and they all, you know, talk amongst each other in the community, which sometimes can be a bit of a lonely place, which we've seen from, from flat, flat earthers who have come back to, to the, we call it the globe side, but you know, yeah. normality. But yeah. So I think, I think stupid is a bit harsh, but I think uneducated and probably stubborn as well. I think that's fair. And I want to emphasize one thing you just said. They feel like they have some secret knowledge. I think that yeah. plays a big part. You also mentioned not all of them are completely honest. At least that's what yes. you were insinuating. And yeah. that was a big part of my conversation with Creaky and MC Toon. What is your opinion in general? MC Toon broke it down between, or he called them t-shirt sellers and t-shirt buyers. So you have people who are potentially making money off yes. YouTube videos. What percentage of them do you think they're all liars or do some of them believe what they say? I think if, if you're talking about those sorts who uh, are in it for, for financial reasons, who are just putting on an act and a show and maybe being a bit, a little bit, you know, noisy and argumentative deliberately, I'd say that's in the region of 10 and 20% of flat earthers that we know of who are online. There's a massive chunk in the middle who watch content and are flat earthers but don't make any content and then on the other end of this scale you've probably got another 15 percent or so which make content who genuinely believe it from my experience in the last six years i think that's roughly where they all lie my interview or conversation with creaky you actually entitled the dishonesty of flat earth you seem like i don't know less or less pessimistic it sounds like you actually think not a huge percent of them are liars whereas yeah. creaky and uh, mc tune than... almost don't want to believe any of them you gotta lie to flurf they are all liars right okay. at, least, at least at least the ones that are online the personalities online that we all know yeah. yeah let me give you a few names someone you made a video about recently and you've probably made i don't know dozens of videos about cc chris CC, from new york yeah. you said something in your recent video to where at the end you said Deep down, you think he knows that he's wrong. Yeah. Can you expand on that? Yeah. So I think that he's so far in now that even if he wanted to say, yeah, I was wrong, I think his own, what's the word? His own ego won't let him admit that he's wrong. Possibly. I don't know. I mean, he, I think he he's definitely genuine the way he is. Yeah. And he, he definitely comes across as believing it but i i do think that deep down he's had he's had doubts but he's just never going to act on those doubts because he's so far in now and he's made so much content 
but he's one he's a very religious flat earther so and and the religious flat earthers tend to be the ones that are saying what they think is true that they believe i couldn't agree more with you on that about chris creaky was in agreement that he believes the earth is flat and honestly yeah. does but i think when you said deep deep down yeah he's got doubts way down, way down into his, his yeah uh, his, his blackened heart yeah <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you about a few others flat earth dave flat earth dave that's a tough one because obviously he's making money out of it but i do think he believes it really again he's, he's another religious one i don't know that's a tough one actually because he's he's got a lot of financial eggs in the basket for it hasn't he yeah as far as i understand yeah yeah it's a tough one i think even if he did realize he probably is in too far deep financially to to pull out of that one I've spoken with Flatzoid, Toasty. not directly, but kind of back and forth in, in videos. But he actually reacted to my conversation with Creaky. And he was in agreement that Flat Earth Dave is a fake Flat Earther. It's, de with... it's definitely a possibility. Definitely yeah. a possibility. Yeah. Yeah, Flatzoid's interesting because he he's, um, although obviously he's wrong, he's <laughs> he's quite honest on his opinions on other Flat Earthers. He doesn't always agree with all of them. It's quite refreshing, actually, from a flat earther. Yeah, he believed that Eric Dubay was an honest flat earther. What do you think? Dubay, that's a tough one. I don't know with Dubay because he's so he's so closed up to the rest of the the world. Almost, you know, he sits there in his little place and he records his videos and he he pops on a video every now and again with people like Nathan or Dell. But you hardly ever see him, and he and he never responds. I've tried to speak to him so many times, and he never he never responds to me, ever, with any questions I ask him. So, it's a tough one, Debay. I don't know, I don't know. I'm I'm on the I'm on the fence with him. Okay, fair enough. You mentioned Nathan Oakley. What about yeah. what about him? Hundred percent not a flat earther. Damn! Really? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, as as close as hundred percent as I can get. Interesting. He, okay, he does not believe it because he's again he, you know, he's got a daily show. He uploads videos all the time. Talked about being financially dependent on YouTube. So, and there's been things that have happened in the past where we've seen you know messages have been leaked between him and Sleeping Warrior where he's saying you know don't talk about this because it's proof of the globe and and things like that. So, I think Nathan is is in it for financial gain, really. I agree. He could, he could probably make more defending the globe, though. <laughs> it's, yeah, maybe. But it, it's too late now. It seems like once you go back, to because everyone started out as a glober, and they, no one was yeah. flat earthers until they started watching videos. Once you go back, you're ostracized. Yeah, you, you, you've got, you're totally cut. Like, obviously, we know uh, Seek Truth, Speak Truth. We know Ranty, and we know now recently Rachie. Yeah. However many zeros it is. I'm looking to speak with her as well, actually. Well, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Because like, she, okay, but she was another one who was quite honest. You know, she she was trying to find... Her and Ranty were similar. She was trying to find out things about the world. And Ranty was the observational guy. And, and you know, the second he saw that photo and he couldn't explain it, that was it for him. Bob Nadell, rest in peace. Honest flat earther. I think he is, or he was, but I just don't think he was getting the results he wanted to prove what he thought was true. Yeah. Which is, you know, why with the hot mic in the um in the documentary where he was saying, you know, if we put out what we know now, we're in big trouble because it doesn't really prove what we want it to prove. I mean, fair play for trying to, you know, use experimentation to prove that what, what they want to prove, but they just didn't get the result they wanted. So they kept going and they kept going and they kept going. And and that is typical of flat earthers. If they don't get the result they want. It's either a duff experiment or they'll try again and, and try and get the result they want. I, th I think he was truly surprised when the yeah. results didn't come back. Definitely, definitely. And the same with Jaron as well in, in that. And, and obviously Jaron has, has done countless live streams with damage control on that one. Do you think that he's been converted in the back of his mind? I think so, yeah. I think how can you get those results and not be? The, the damage control after that, that documentary went out on Netflix was mind-blowing how he came out and did everything he could to try and you know say that that this wasn't the case and i i interviewed the director of that film on my podcast because he initially before it was out on netflix he messaged me and said look this uh 
film is out soon. I'd really like your opinion on it. Um, and I did like the um, the review on the channel where I went through it all. And then it came out on Netflix about two or three months later after that. And obviously everyone saw it then. And he, the director, Daniel Clark, he said it went exactly how it says in the in, how it shows it in the in the documentary. There was right. no messing around. It just exactly happened how we've shown it. And he was absolutely gobsmacked that the result was with the light and stuff that he could see it. He couldn't see it. And then he could when they raised it up. I just don't understand how you can not realize yourself. Well, okay, I might be wrong there. I think you can hear it in his yeah. interest. Yeah, you can. you can hear it. You can hear it. I don't know. I, I also hope to speak to Jaron one of these days. I asked MC because MC2 and Jaron have spoken a few times. Uh, yeah, they have. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't think he likes me very much, but he always um takes the mick out of me for having scientists tattooed on my arm. And he's like, oh, are you going to get another guy? It made me think of a, of a, uh, a video I could do about asking Jaron to do an experiment or something. And if he did it, I'll tattoo his name on my arm. <laughs> Still need to work that one out yet. But... Oh, that's good. That, that would be hilarious. Yeah. One thing you don't do is you don't debate. And you've said no. in many videos, you don't debate established fact. It, it's a bit of, two, there's a there's two sort of reasons. One is that I, like I said, I don't debate established fact. It is an absolute fact that the earth is spherical. The second you enter into debate with them, then you're giving them a platform to suggest that your mind is for turning. Now, obviously, MC2 and FTFE, all of that, they're, they're, they know that their mind's not turning and and they do it and they do some great proofs. I'm sure that people have been watching the debate and thought, well, hang on a sec, these flat earthers aren't correct, which is absolutely great. So half of it's for that reason, but the other half is because it absolutely winds up the flat earthers that I don't debate. They hate <laughs> it. They hate that I don't debate and it makes me laugh. I find it amusing, so I will stick to my guns and not, and not debate. It's funny because they do call you out for not, and then they always say, at least I've seen it so many times, they say, oh, debate, debate, right? But he yeah. won't debate either. <laughs> no, no, I've I've asked debate. So there was a, po a point where, you know, Conspiracy Cats, he's not yeah. really around much anymore, I but know, he did yeah. a few debates on my channel and I messaged debate saying, look, come on, big channel here, have a debate on Flat Earth with Cats. Totally ignore me. Yeah. He didn't respond, so. Yeah, it makes me suspicious. I mean, they could say the same yeah. about you, but this makes me suspicious. What do you make of the fact that flat earthers try to debunk the globe rather than prove a flat earth? And do you even agree with that statement? And what do you make of um, it? No, that's, that is that is something I talk about all the time. So if I'm interacting with people, sometimes on Twitter or sometimes on Instagram who message me, I'll ask for, I call it positive flat earth proof because they don't tend to do that. You bang on. It's all about trying to disprove the globe. Okay, fine. You can disprove the globe if you want to, but then the, the earth could be unicorn shape after that. You, you know, you're not, you need to give me positive proof that the earth is a flat plane. Right. And 90% of their arguments is, oh, this means that the earth isn't a globe, therefore it's flat. And that that isn't good enough, really. They need to give us positive proof. And I'm sure if you entered into a debate with a flat earther and the debate, the topic of the debate was positive flat earth proof, it would last 10 minutes. Yeah. Because they wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't be able to deal with it because they're all about bashing the globe. They'd just start talking about the globe and then be like, no, no, you can't talk about the globe. Positive flat, flat earth proof. All right. I didn't want to just talk about flat earth. There's been a lot of UAPs and UFOs in the news, especially these last few years. All the videos that have come out, the US government releasing them, and then yep. the testimony before Congress has been pretty compelling, in my opinion. What is your opinion? I'm of the opinion, like, if we've got evidence for it, then great. The question is, are UFOs evidence for anything other than an explanation that we can give for it not being any sort of alien life? The first person I go to whenever there's a new UFO sighting is Mick West. You heard of Mick West? I know Mick West, yeah. He breaks down every single one. Like, every single one he'll break down. There was the jellyfish one the other day. Did you see that? I haven't seen that. No, it, says like, like, it looks like a jellyfish floating. And he's, like, basically figured out it's a bunch of balloons. Okay. Uh, so, you know, so Mick West. I'll go to Mick West first. And if he can't figure it out, then I'll be like, okay, well, maybe there's something going on here. But most of the time, he figures out exactly what's going on. And I don't think that if alien life has ever decided to travel away from its planet, I just think that we're too far away from any alien life for them to come here. 
Sometimes I wonder if, if the UAPs are extraterrestrial, are they biological or are they machine? Oh, yeah. And, you know, who's yeah. been to Mars? People haven't, but our machines have. Yes, true. And, you know, we're, we're sending probes to other star systems that are on their way. They'll get there alone before we ever do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I do think it's possible that they are extraterrestrial in that sense. No, I wouldn't rule it out. It's an interesting point, actually, because, you know, we've sent Voyager 2 and Voyager 1 out well mm-hmm. past the, the edges of the solar system, and they'll still probably be going when the human race is gone. So right. that it's a certain possibility. So if a, if a, if a planet has sent a, sent a probe out 4 billion years ago or 3 billion years ago, who's to say it hasn't passed Earth? So if you had to bet, you would say that UAPs have a terrestrial explanation. Yeah. I, I can you can never say 100 percent, but 99.999 percent i am with wow. that do you think we've ever been visited the earth in general not just humans yeah who knows maybe maybe because five billion years is a long time but again the distances are, are probably you know it's a that is one that you can't say no to with any sort of certainty at all so you know it's definitely a possibility but unlikely but not impossible. So you don't find any of like the ancient alien evidence compelling? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair Sorry. enough. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to. I used to. And then yeah. I've seen some rather good documentaries exposing some of the lies or faults in there. I mean, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. You know, the stuff they come up with. But again, either way, it's it's impossible to say yes or no. But I just think... Yeah, the likelihood of it is extremely small. Yeah, that's fair. I, I think that's very possible that there's intelligent. There's a difference between intelligent life and life that's interstellar traveling between stars, yeah, absolutely. right? We, you know, we, like, we, we have tons of intelligent life on this planet, yeah. right? Dogs. My, dog, my dog is <laughs> fairly intelligent. You know, right. he knows who's around, but he's not going to go traveling 75 light years, is he? So Exactly. As amazing as we are, as we all, because we obviously we're quite, we think we're the best and we can't even get to Mars. So we do think very high of ourselves, but I think of uh, the as, Copernican as whole, principle and, and the mediocrity principle. I, I think we're probably very average. Oh, yeah. yeah. That leads me to conclude that there's life out there, you know, until it's similar yeah. to us. Like you said, 100 billion or 200 billion stars in our galaxy alone. So there's nothing stopping. I mean, all the ingredients for life are there. Right. There's nothing stopping it happening, but you need a lot of things to 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 be kind of in sync for it to happen. Zooming out a bit, life in the universe. Do you think life, uh, be it microbial uh, or intelligent, is yeah. common, uncommon? What, what do you think? Microbial is almost a certainty. I think it's only a matter of time before we find it in this solar system, let alone anywhere else. I think intelligent life is a rarity. But then there are hundreds of billions of galaxies with hundreds of billions of stars, all with pretty much all with planets around, I'd imagine. So a rarity can happen twice, three, four times when you're talking about that many numbers. I just think the distances are too far to ever know. And you need some pretty wacky physics to start, you know, getting over that. Right. Even at traveling at light speed, it takes millennia. Exactly. Yeah. Wormholes are a, a thing. Whether we know they work or exist is another thing. That leads me into another popular topic in culture today, which is AI. Yeah. And I do have concerns, and I want to ask you about your concerns, both about short-term job displacement. I don't know if you're seeing any of that yet. Uh, you know, We have potentially self-driving cars coming online the next couple of decades a lot of job loss there. A lot of white collar jobs, it turns out, might be at risk. What do you think? Have you do you use AI, and do you, what do you think we're dealing with here over the next couple of decades? So it's a very for me. I mean, I'm not by any shape an expert on AI at all, but I do use it. The main thing I use it to is to bounce off ideas off of. You know, if I, I'll I'll ask Chat GP, GTP a question about something, and it will sometimes siphon off an answers that I haven't thought of before. You know, I could be I could be researching a video, I could be coming up with video ideas, and it's a really useful tool for that. Absolutely. And the other the other thing I use it for is uh, imagery. So you know, if I if I need something for a thumbnail, I use AI on Photoshop, and it will come up with variations of things to use and stuff like that. That is harmless for a content creator. But in terms of what you're saying for job losses, I mean, there, there are jobs which 
AI could do, which could easily take over, especially, you know, if we're talking about things like admin related, when we're, you know, writing content, organizing diaries, you know, I'm sure now you could program an AI to be a PA. Yeah. Uh, they probably are. They probably are out there. I don't know. So I don't know enough about it, but I mean, the self-driving, how a lot of it's to do with trust, isn't it? So how trust were, how trusting are we going to be of self-driving cars? How, how far does that trust extend for, in order to actually own one and have it drive you everywhere. Yeah. They they seem like at the moment they're better than a bad driver, but I don't yeah. think they're better than an experienced driver. I was actually having the same conversation with my wife the other day. And I said, to her, I'm sure once they perfect it, the computer errors will be, will be less than the human errors. On, on average, I think they already are. Okay. But I would you still, go. you know, <laughs> I wouldn't want to put my wife in one exactly, over, yeah. over exactly. me. I'd rather, exactly. you know, yeah. me drive yeah. than... Uh, it's a tough one. It's a real tough one. But um... what about more of a long term risk? I'm fascinated by the existential risk that they yeah. pose. What do so, you mean, like Ultron? In yeah. not necessarily Ultron, because that's more of like a Terminator, but yeah. more of a Skynet. It, does it depend on how much, how many capabilities we give AI? For example, ChatGTP, it can't. It only knows so much knowledge up to a certain date. Right. And it can't access the internet live and, and things like that. Do you think those restrictions will always be in place or will there be a time where in order to let an AI do a job sufficiently, it needs access to things like that? I think, yeah, we're getting those restrictions are not going to last. Yeah. So then there might be issues because it could do anything, couldn't it? You know, it yeah. could be the best war general of all yeah. time. It could be yeah. the best stock trader of all time. And then yeah. you just have unlimited wealth in the hands of bad people. Yeah. Okay, so you worry, but you don't lose sleep over it, it sounds. I don't lose sleep over it yet, but who knows? Who knows yeah. how far they'll take it? That's the thing. Will, will we be re restrictive enough to, to uh, make it sensible? Or will we do the classic human thing of uh, trying to make it as big and as amazing as possible? All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. As I mentioned at the start, part two of our conversation is coming soon or possibly already out, depending on when you're watching this. I have more interviews coming soon, but in the meantime, did you know I also interviewed MC Toon and Creaky Blinder? Don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my debunking videos as well. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.